will you be doing for two years? Uh, I think I'll be making the tea. I'm Simon McCoy. Sometimes I forget. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. OK, here we go. Camera set. It's very exciting to see something that's not just telling you what's going on, but asking you why it matters to you. Action. It matters to us. What makes GB News so different is the fact that it opens up the floor to people around the country that reflect them and their communities and getting access to vital information, but also with a little bit of humour and mischief and entertainment. Let's not hang around or they'll find reasons to do it another ten times. <laughs> do you mind telling us about growing up? How long have you got? I was born and bred in Hull, one of six children. We had quite a lot of struggles, challenges, adversity, but what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. We come on air at one of the most important times in British history. Coming out of the coronavirus, it's about how people find new jobs. News all of a sudden became so central to all of our lives because actually without the news, we didn't know how we were going to be able to live our lives. And for us to be able to say, right, we're going to take a fresh look at those things that have happened in the last four or five years, and we're going to take a fresh look at everything that unfolds in the wake of that. I think the timing is perfect. I'm going to be really looking forward to representing the stories of other communities in the UK. GB News is proud to be British. I think the clue's in the name. Britain is home. We want to hear what people's opinions are, trying to reflect what you're going through. Genuinely shake up the mainstream conversation, lots of new perspectives, and represent many of the views in the country that have been marginalised. I think every news network would say, we want to represent Britain. We do represent Britain. This is more ground up. The fact that we've got reporters who live in every area of the country telling us their stories about what life is like in those areas. We want to mix it a bit and, and, and show all parts of the UK to all parts of the UK. You've been from Northern Ireland. Yes, we all know about the troubles. And many people have been surprised by what we've seen in the news recently. That's largely not because those stories have gone away. And what's really important is that you get to hear those stories. It just doesn't deserve coverage when bad things happen. It deserves equal coverage at any point in the year. Fostering community, making people feel included, knitting people together is absolutely vital. It'll be less obsessed, perhaps, with what's happening in Westminster, more interested in what those decisions mean to you. Politics most people is, are there enough services? Can they get treated in the local hospital? By involving people, you're going to end up with a situation which is much more broadly reflective of what the country actually is. Again, when you have opinion polls not matching up with the results, it's because people aren't telling the truth. They're saying what they think the acceptable opinion would be, which is the thing called preference falsification. It's not helpful. I was an MP during the Brexit debate and the referendum and the parliamentary hoo-ha that followed. As it happens, I voted to remain, but I respected the result. Brexit is at the heart of a lot of our problems at the moment because that in entire debate got reduced to this ridiculous binary of good versus evil, stupid versus clever, racist versus not racist. This was a debate about our membership of an economic trading bloc, let's not forget. That debate worried me because there was a sense that some people's views were more important than others. Part of my job will be to try and unmuffle some of those muffled voices. A majority of people feel that if they do want to have discussions about difficult issues, they risk losing their livelihood and their reputation. Progress is only achieved through social liberalism. It isn't achieved through telling people to shut up. What's important to me is to try and make sure that we hand over journalism to the next generation in a better state than it's currently in. So a lot of the time you watch the news, people are not really communicating. They're reading an autocue, it's quite clear. For too long, news has been a really confrontational, angry place. News doesn't always have to be bad news. We can also help restore a can-do attitude. It's party time! <laughs> Sometimes the news can feel pretty humourless, the wagging finger. I think the audience will appreciate a bit of levity. I'll be doing a show at 8 o'clock called Andrew Neil. Took us six months to think of that title. Finally got there. <laughs> Too much of this political discussion, particularly around the culture war and all of that stuff, just ends up being reduced to people screaming at each other and storming off um, and behaving like toddlers. I'd like to keep the toddlers at bay. It doesn't mean throwing your toys out of the cot. Just get the grown-ups back. If I had to sum GB News up in three words, brave, challenging and bold. British. Unbiased. Welcoming. Good news now. Exciting. Dynamic. Different. Innovative. Mischievous. Honest. Informative. Fun. Yours. I'm Dan Wooten. Anaya Falaran Iman. I'm Michelle Jubry. Darren McCaffrey. I'm Becca Hudson. Alex Phillips. Tom Harwood. If I can remember it, yeah. I'm Simon McCoy. This is us. This is GB News, Britain's news channel.